Marcy, ladies and gentlemen. That was great. Yeah, it was great. Marcy. Marcy. That did sound great. Well, not bad. Welcome home. Welcome back to uh, England. Welcome back to the United Kingdom. Thank you. Do you miss it when you're not here? I do miss it, yes. What do you miss There's about it? There's certain things I miss. I miss um, British people. Uh -huh. And I miss very small things and very silly things and uh, British television and um, the arts. What sort of TV do you miss then? What shows do you miss from British I just miss television generally because in America, television is just for children. Oh, really? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, no, but they have some great shows. No, they don't. What about ER? <laughs> well, you've just sort of answered your own question. What the? <laughs> what about, what about uh, West Wing? Uh, well, exactly. That's a great show. I think you could strengthen my argument. If, so. he was the, if he was the president, we'd all be very happy, wouldn't we? Well, if Annie B was the president other than, we'd be very happy. Yeah, I'm curious for that. Do you, um, do you, are you um, registered to vote in the US? Do you vote over here? Do you vote anywhere? I don't vote anywhere. I, I don't have enough faith, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm like most people in the world, I have no faith. Well, we got serious quite early, didn't we? That was my fault, I feel. Um, can, I call you, can I call you Stephen? No. Why? why? <laughs> I, th I thought we'd already we'd become friends here and then... Yeah, now but Stephen doesn't mean friends to me. Then they're not, they're, no. Does it not? No. Stephen. No. But that was your name when you were a little boy? When I was small, yeah. But I wasn't a very happy little boy. So. So that's why you, you changed your name? You just wanted to distance yourself yes. from your past? Yeah, which I thought was quite clever. And so you're just, everyone calls you Marty now? <laughs> everybody, priests, uh, everybody. What about on your passport and your driver's licence? It says Mother. It, no, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, uh, it just says M. It can, really does. Can, can we be friends after the show? I don't think so. Oh, well, we're <laughs> <it's fine. laughs> Why not? Well, you, you have so many friends. But no, but yeah, and you don't have enough, so I'm going to share with you. But also, you, you have Oscar Wilde's haircut. What's wrong with that? <laughs> you see, I have a bone to pick with you. You're still sticking with the quiff, and let's face it, you know, that's the last year's thing, man. Well, you know, when you get to my age, Jonathan, if you still have hair, it's incredible. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not complaining. Don't you think this Townsford boyish look works for me? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> um, now, Marcy has a new album out. It's actually not out just yet. Is it next it's week? It's out on Monday. Ah, oh, I'm telling you, the album is great, OK? Uh, a few people here may have heard it already. It's called You Are The Quarry, OK? It's great. It's very, very good. I think it's your best solo album. I think it is. Well, I think it's my best ever album. Well, <laughs> it's fantastic. It really is. It's your, is this your tenth solo album, I believe? I think it's about 50 seconds. <laughs> Uh, okay, when I finished listening to it, I sat down and listened to it in entirety. This is how good it is. I nearly cried. Well, why didn't you cry? Because it wasn't <laughs> quite that good. <laughs> no, no, because, because I like most men of my age, I like to hold something back. For, for when? For when you're my friend. <laughs> All right? We'll talk about this later. Uh, do you have a lot of people trying to kind of worm their way into your favour? Because you kind of, you know, seem someone who it, it isn't easy to get close to. Mm. Therefore, it's all the more enticing and all the more tempting to try and get close. Really? Yes. No, I've not noticed that, to be honest. <laughs> do you find it easy to let new friends into your life? Uh, no, I don't. It takes me a long time with people. I'm, um, I'm very slow. <laughs> And do you, like, do you like having new friends? I don't like people, to be honest. <laughs> um, how many friends have you got? Seven. Do you have got... <laughs> really, seriously? Yeah, seven. You do strike me as the sort of person who could name and number their friends quite clearly. Well, yeah. I have a couple of friends who I've been friends with for over 20 years. And um, as time goes by, they become more important to me. I get the feeling you're someone who doesn't suffer fools particularly gladly. Oh, never. I mean, it's a waste of time. So you would be quite daunting company, I would have thought. Yes, extremely, which is um, why lots of people don't like me. And do you never feel like, well, I'll soften it a bit tonight, I'll turn on the old Mozza charm and make me feel good? <laughs> there is no Mozza charm. Oh, <laughs> well, there must be some. There absolutely is not, no. There really isn't. And, and say when someone leaves, say you met a new person, okay? Yeah. When they leave, when, they, when you shut the door, and you're relieved to be a, alone again, I imagine. Yes. Okay? Do you think, oh, wish I'd been a bit nicer? <laughs> Uh, I don't recall ever feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, I, I just wonder what took them so long to leave. That's, the, that's really the basic thought. But you see, once again, we're very similar. Yes. I can't wait for people to leave. 
<laughs> but you love people. Yes, but only in very small bursts. And you stand before this audience and you love them and you shout to them and blah, 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 blah. And it's a professional relationship we have. But you perform in front of an audience and you love the audience when they're there applauding you. And in my case, Jonathan, it's not performing. I don't perform ever. <laughs> you big old liar. It's, it's absolutely true. I don't perform. I've seen you waving your arms around. And that's your performance. And that's, that's real. Come on. That's real life. Rosa. Oi. <laughs> Jonathan. There must be moments when you think, no, I don't no, fancy I, I, I'll just fake it a bit. I've said it before, only seals perform. So you really, you give it... It's the genuine emotion? Yes. Well, you must be exhausted at the end of a tour. Yes, absolutely. But that's nice, isn't it? What about people who work with you? Uh, what kind of relationship do you have with them, then? Does that ever blur and you ever feel awkward that it's, they want to be more friendly and you don't want to let them closer? Yeah, it's happened in the past. It has happened in the past. <laughs> We're talking about a long time ago, I imagine, then. No. No, recently? No, um, it has happened. It, it, it does become difficult sometimes. Um, but um, then it ends, remarkably when they found out what I'm really like. <laughs> what are you really like, then? What I do you mean by that? I've got no idea. Say you're in for the evening alone, in Los Angeles, where you currently live most of the time. Yes. And you don't watch TV, we've established that. Yes. What would you do with your time? What would you...? Well, I'd do very normal things. I'd listen to music, eat, and uh, listen to the radio. You are, I think, sorting out now, aren't you? You seem on a more well, even it's... keel than previously. Well, Jonathan, as you know, it's age. Yeah. And it does quite comforting things it as does. well as very distressing things. Because you're now 45 or 44? 70. <laughs> I am. I think you've always been 70 inside, haven't you? No, I'm just, I'm just a little bit older than you. Yeah, a tiny bit older. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, I think you only look a little bit worse than me. I think we're, we're looking... <laughs> <laughs> but you, but what, you've got a good physique on you. you. Do you work out now? No, never, never, never. You but, look quite muscular now. Well, um, I don't eat flesh. Now, you've never eaten flesh, have you? Uh, well, I did for t until I was 11. So um, that keeps me quite healthy. Now, so when you were 11, when the turning point came, I know you've talked about this, uh, what was it that t turned you off the concept of, of eating meat? Well, it's so cruel. And I've never heard a good argument for eating animals, ever. And you can't say, well, it tastes nice, because it doesn't until you stick, you garnish it and stick salt and pepper, you fry it, you grill it, blah, 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 blah. blah. But nobody just kills an animal and eats it straight away. <laughs> no. You wouldn't want to do that. Well, no, but why, why, think, why don't they? I think if Dale was in a hurry one night and it wasn't yet defrosted, <laughs> he possibly would suck on a chicken leg or something. Yes, I, I think you're correct. Yeah. And there are a lot of meat eaters in the building tonight, OK? I'm How sure. You know? Because I'm sure there are. Well, I'm one of them, OK? But I almost, occasionally, I, I, I become vegetarian and then I, I'm lured back in. But you see, that's no good. That's yeah. no good. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about people who meat eaters? Could you have a meat eater as a friend? Over the telephone, yes, but I don't think I could... I couldn't go to a restaurant with somebody. And see the meat in front of you. Yeah, you see, because my daughter's become a vegetarian. She became a few years ago when she was about... I think she was about eight, and she just said to us one day, I don't want to eat meat. And we said, that's fine, that's fine. She said, why not, darling? She said, I don't want to eat anything that walks beside us. Yes. Okay? Now yeah. she won't even eat fish, so swimming's entered the equation. Um, <laughs> but well, we would know, not fish, eat... When, when, when fish are caught, they suffocate and they scream really loudly. People think they're just very quiet and they flap a bit and it's over but they go through extreme hell. It's not nice then, is it? Well, how could it be? I mean, is it, no, nobody could be that hungry, really. But I, uh, I remember hearing someone saying that they think that your song, Meat is Murder, and that kind of stand you made, that probably converted more people to vegetarianism. Yes. That year, certainly, than just about any other statement. Well, I, I I'm told so. And would you do another song like that, maybe to sort of say, Meat still murder? No, I would, uh, I'd never be that crass, Jonathan. It hasn't no. got any better. <laughs> no, no. Do you, do you have a dog or a budgie? I've got a cat. Would you eat your cat? If I was really... <laughs> but, but I wouldn't, not through choice, I know what you're saying. But if I was real, I mean, if I was stuck, if a plane crashed. If a plane crashed, you would possibly consider. Why would your cat be on a plane with you? <laughs> well, logically, he might not be. I was, I was reaching. Now, your fan base uh, is huge, wide, but also really diverse, really quite strange in a way. I mean, people really go nuts for you. I think they appreciate you now more than they did previously. Is that the case from your perspective? Do you think yes. that now there's a different... Yes, I do. I don't, I don't think it's simply because I've stayed around long enough. I think people who like me consider me to be quite real. And in pop music, that's very rare. Well, it's getting more and more rare, it seems. Absolutely. It's completely impossible to be natural in pop music. <laughs> uh, so I think people just see me as a real person with uh, views. And you're touring here again this year, I guess, are you? Absolutely, yes. When are you, when are you doing it? I appear in Manchester next weekend. Yeah. 
which is the first time in 12 years. It's going to be fantastic. Isn't it's, it? I think it sounds as if it's going to be extraordinary. And now, how are you coming on the stage? Because I know you always like to, you like to appear in different dramatic ways, don't you? <laughs> That's not true. Yes, you do. It really I've seen you carried on. <laughs> well, that just happened once, and for some reason it was captured on film. Can I drive you on stage in my bubble car? I don't think so. Oh, I'll see. <laughs> Wouldn't I, I, it be a lovely thing for you and for me? No, I'm... I'll, I'll make my hair, I'll quiff it up for the occasion. I'm striving for some degree of popularity, John. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you get one more chance to be friends and then the offer's withdrawn. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you see uh, Stars in Their Eyes? Why would I be watching okay. Stars in Their Eyes? <laughs> well, you've got to do something in the evenings. Yes, but that isn't something that you have. Right. <laughs> Harry Hill, brilliant British comedian, who I know you know is a fan of yours. He's yes. Tennessee yes. He uttered the immortal words, Tonight, Matthew, <laughs> I shall be Morrissey. You didn't see this? No. Would you, would, you, would you like to have a little peek? I'd love to. This is a bit of a TV first. <laughs> this is uh, Morrissey watching Harry Hill as Morrissey. I think you're going to be suitably impressed. Who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Matthew. I am going to be Morrissey. Morrissey! Are you, are you, you, you actually did, did not like that, did you? Well, the thing, I haven't been like that for 20 years. Of course not, but he was doing the kind of, you know, the old image, and I suppose it's what they thought would be the more immediate, recognisable face of Morrissey to the mums and dads, I guess. But why cater to mums and dads? Well, because that's the show. You know stars in your eyes. I've heard of it, yes. We're friends now, remember? Yes. <laughs> you going to come round while you have I might do. I might, yeah, come I, down, I, come I, round! I, I might borrow your wallpaper hey, table. I've got lambs. Lambs? In the garden, two lambs. For what? Just to, well, not to eat. Don't start on that. <laughs> will they become sheep? No, they, yeah, they will become sheep and they'll be loved and cherished as sheep. Until they, they'll die of old age? Yes. Yeah, you sure? Yes! <laughs> you can come in and ride them if you want. <laughs> so you have lambs, you have sheep. Yeah, and I know. you tuck in every Sunday to... You see, that no, I don't terrible. tuck in every Sunday. A lot of the time I have the vegetarian option. Because it's tastier. Hey, <laughs> how do you write a song? I don't mean in a, in a quick way, I don't care, but do you, for example, you work on this new album, okay, and this was years in the coming, wasn't it? It was a few years in the coming. Yes. Do you um, stockpile ideas, things that tick you off, or things that you really want to talk about, or things that you've got, to, or is it kind of a more mechanical approach? You think, okay, time to write a song now. No, no, it's, uh, uh, Jonathan, I think you must realise it's, it's never mechanical. It's never mechanical. Um, I'm, uh, I do feel the urge, and I, I constantly write, and I constantly feel the need to witness and uh, give an account of life. And when you're writing, do you think, okay, here's an idea, here's a concept I want to deal with, or, do you, or just like a couplet coming to head, like there's some lovely, lovely kind of rhymes and ideas in this. That one about the, the last gang member, or the first gang member to die, yeah. and then you've got the, the rhyme with stars and reservoir, which is just such a clever, and you think, now, did that occur to you in advance, or you think, okay, I'm writing this now. Oh, well, that's nice. No, it just all falls into place, honestly. It really does. How lucky. Well, yes, it's quite lucky. But you have lots of talent yourself. Huge amount. <laughs> <laughs> we don't smirk after you said it, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're writing your autobiography. I am indeed, yes. Now, how, how far are you into it? How, how's that going? Well, um, I've, I do have a few chapters left. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Is that a threat of some sort? Or... <laughs> well, it means I have a few chapters that are still open. So you're not deciding to finish it yet or you're still kind of deciding what to put in them? No, I just haven't had time. And you're settling old scores? M millions. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you know, you settle old scores in every album that comes out, don't you? It isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is the one thing that, yeah, I know you're asking me to be friends, but the one thing that makes me hold back <laughs> is the fear that I would turn up in an album being, you know, told off a little bit, being rebuked for something, some small slight, some misunderstanding that you've carried with you and you won't get over. And it's only a minor thing like me saying, why the lamb, you know? <laughs> but it's just, life is a serious business, Jonathan. It really is. You should lighten up. How? Just relax. Come around to me. We'll play tennis. <laughs> so what? Next Tuesday good for you? <laughs> what time? Seven o'clock. 
my place, I'm serving sprouts. <laughs> you know, sprouts scream when they're... Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Morris is going to perform for us one more time this evening. I'm looking forward... This is going to be something very special, I believe. I don't even know what the beginning... Oh, don't be... It's no, you're, not you're doing... special, really. It is special. You are special. Do you not feel special? I'll just prove that it's not special. Oh, <laughs> oh actually, you do want me to give the big build-up. Oh, go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy's going to do something extra special for us, uh, so I'm going to say thank you while he limbers up. So let's say thank you to Marcy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. The one and only Marcy. There is the album. Uh, Marcy, you are the quarry. I tell you, it's just about the best album I've heard all year, no doubt about it. Uh, it's fantastic. So, Morris is going to perform again for us now, but while he limbers up, uh, let me thank the other guests as well. The always wonderful Mr Dale Winton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and the equally delightful Ronnie O'Sullivan. Next week, my guests are like a selection of my favourite chocolates. He's hard on the outside and soft in the middle. It's Eddie Izzard. She's dark, nutty and impossible to resist. Carol Vorderman. And he is an upmarket truffle who's smooth and rich. It's Mr Will Young. Plus, there'll be mouth-watering music from the fabulous France Ferdinand. But now with a special version of Every Day is Like Sunday. <laughs> it's Morrissey!